Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News. I have the pleasure to be joined by Shauna O'Keefe at the Bosch Gym. Shauna, how are you today, mate? I'm good. How are you, Regan? I'm very well, thank you. I mean, the one thing we do share is Kevin Mitchell as a, as a trainer. And uh, yeah, he pushed me today, to be, to be fair. Um, I want to I wanna jump straight into it with yourself. Uh, for those that don't know you, uh, five Irish titles, European junior, world youth, elite senior champ, Felix Stamgold, and a Haringey Box Cup cold. I mean, I feel like I've had to take a break after I've read all that, all that, all those achievements, mate. But when you reflect on your amateur career, how do you reflect on it? Um, I think I had an amazing career, to be honest with you. I mixed it with the best. I had 130 fights, only six losses. The best thing about Ireland, you, um, you're very, very active. So. I learned a lot throughout my career, which I'm really blessed, um, and the coaches that I had. My, um, I have to give a shout out to my um, my club, uh, Clamell Boxing Club. I wouldn't be where I am today without them, to be honest with you. Yeah, my amateur career has got me to where I'm at and got me to the level I'm at going into the pro game. Definitely, and we'll shout out to them as well. I mean, of those of those championships, I know we've spoke about the Haringey Box Cup as well. Obviously, that was the most, probably the most recent one that was this year. But what kind of win stands out to you the most? Um. To be honest, the gold medal in Poland, uh, Felix Stam, because I was only back in the ring six months, because so I took a six, a six year stint out for a career break. And um, winning the gold medal and getting to raise the Irish flag on top of that podium, listening to my national anthem, it's a feeling like I'll never get. And it's a feeling I've wished for since I started when I was 14. And uh, yeah, that's definitely goes down for me, yeah. Definitely, I think people forget you, uh, you beat Hannah Robinson as well in that yeah, final. Yeah, yeah um, it was Ireland versus England and we were playing all the music, all the rebel music inside in the dressing room. It was just unbelievable. Like, So I'm one of these, I just, I enjoy the moment. I don't get too caught up. I don't take it too seriously, but obviously I take it seriously in the ring. But yeah, my, the coaches I had in the corner that time and yeah, Ireland beating GP is a huge thing. And especially me only coming back and all. I was the first one to win a gold medal over there. So yeah, it was amazing feeling. Amazing. Definitely. I hope the cranberries are going to be played on your ring walk as well, mate. Um, talking about, uh, you've just turned over pro, uh, and your debut is on December the 8th, TM14 show at York Hall. I mean, less said about the last time we were at York Hall, the, the better, mate, I think. But uh, but uh, surely you're excited to get the ball rolling as well. Yes, I am. Um, I looked into turning pro since May, since after I won a gold medal. So it's been a long road to get to here. So yes, I'm extremely excited. Preparation's going amazing. I'm mixing it with the best of the best over here. I'm fe feeling physically fit, very, very strong, and really, really ready for uh, December the 8th. Perfect. And for those that don't know you, Shauna, what can people expect on December the 8th from your performance? Fireworks. Expect nothing less. Make sure you're down to your York call on December the 8th as well. Um, I was going to say, you just mentioned there you've been mixing it with the best. I mean, this week you've been sparring with Caroline Debar, current IBO lightweight world champion. I mean, Caroline Debar is on some rise. I mean, some would say she's on like the biggest rise in women's boxing, especially in the UK at the moment, until Shauna O'Keefe gets involved as well. But how are those spar sparring sessions for you this week? I have to say they're incredible. Um, to be honest, my eyes have been on her since I came over here because to, to become the best, you have to mix it with the best. And being in the ring with her, it gives me an indication of where I'm at at the, um, the lightweight division as I am moving into the lightweight division. It is my weight. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely blown away by um, the level that I'm at just stepping in. Caroline's an absolute phenomenal fighter. But um, yeah, it gave me a really good idea of where I'm at and I'm only going to get progressively better. Like everyone needs to remember I'm only a baby in the game, so I need to rem remember that as well. But I'm willing to mix it with the best to become the best. Definitely. I mean, if you carry on the rounds of uh, someone like Caroline Dubois, you will only reach the top as well, mate. Um, we did mention as well, Kevin Mitchell, we share, we share a, tra a trainer, which is a crazy thing to say to a pro boxer. But I mean, what is it like? Um, What's it like training with Kev here at, here at the Bosch Gym as well? Wild. Like, there's no better way to explain it. Wild. Like, the training's unbelievable. Like, his um, attention to detail, like, his energy, everything about him, he puts 150% into it. Like, there's no days off for Kevin Mitchell, and that's what you need in the pro game. You need someone that's on ball all the time, that constantly, like, keeps you on ball as well. Like, because, you know, when you're in camp, it can get, like, real doomy and gloomy, and you can get a bit depressed, a bit down, your body's aching, and then you have this baldy fool coming in and being like you want to be a boxer you want to be a boxer but yeah he's the best he's the best <laughs> 
is Kevin's catchphrase if those that didn't know when you're doing pads and you're tired and he would just scream do you want to be a boxer right in your face it's really annoying um, obviously you talked about obviously you've moved over here you've relocated to Essex to train with Kev I mean you've mentioned there boxing can be a tough sport at times but you've relocated granted only Ireland to England but you've still relocated countries I mean how has that transition been for you it must be it must be nice but it must be difficult at the same time um, I'm going to be honest, the people here is what made it so easy for me. Uh, the support I've gotten and like it's, they've, this space has been made a community, not only a community, but I've been like in, invited into families and homes. Like it's just amazing. That's what made it so comfortable. At the end of the day, I have a job to do and you go where the work is the best and the, be the work is the best in Essex. Obviously working with Kevin and everybody in here and um, yeah, it, it actually made the decision so easy. Yeah, I did have to uproot my life literally with a call, but I plan to do everything I can to become world champion and this was the first move to make, yeah. Definitely, I mean, and it shows a testament to yourself, Sean, on where you want to get to in the game by relocating literally on a phone call, as you said. I know we've spoken about this before as well. And we've spoken about your amateur achievements, but one thing that you told me, I think one of our first runs here in Essex, um, you were the last fighter to fight Katie Taylor in Ireland in the amateurs. I mean, that's a, spe that's a special thing in, in, in itself, mate. I mean, how do you look back on that and the kind of... Um, this might be a stupid question, but were you surprised after that fight to watching Katie go where she where she went to after that fight? No, I wasn't at all. Um, I, I know what Katie's about. Um, to be honest with you, when... When I came back, um, I was boxing at 60 kilos, or sorry, 57. My coach actually wanted me to make 57 for those elites. It's my first ever um, elites I ever fought in as well. But I was like, no, like I didn't want to. I wanted to get in. Like I know I'm one of these people. You'd literally have to paint me with a sledgehammer to get me away from you, and that's no word of a lie. I've been like that for as long as I can remember. So I knew getting in the ring, I'd have no problem against her. She wouldn't stop me. She wouldn't hurt me. And I'll only grow. I, I've said it in every interview I've had. It's one of the best losses I've ever had in my whole career. I only grew from it. Um, I did the whole four twos. I won the third round. Every, t every time she threw a flurry of punches at me, I threw them back. So I wasn't completely out of my depth. So no, it was actually the best experience of my life. And yeah, I knew she was going to go, um, go on and she was going to... Uh, progressed on and she was going to go to pros because she was talking about it but um and even even everything she's done in the pro game i knew she would the woman just she's one of these people she just doesn't go down for nobody she literally wants to reach the heights of the heights and that's why i've looked up to her my whole entire career to be honest with you and i want to do the same and more definitely i mean this, the katie taylor story is nothing but nothing but remarkable as well and how she kind of pioneered for women to fight in Ireland as well and then going undisputed I know she's just lost to Chantel Cameron but I mean she's going straight in in a higher way which a lot of people didn't want her to take I mean what, what's your opinion on the rematch how do you think it's going to go so I spoke to someone that's quite close to her and I heard something that kind of veered my decision I believe there'll be a different Katie like I watched her at the press conference over in Dublin and I just it just seemed like there was a different Katie, to be honest with you. Um, like the, the opponent change, the weight change, all of that needs to be factored in in the last fight. Um, I think Katie is really facet. Um, don't get me wrong, Chantal Cameron's unbelievable. She's a powerhouse. But my loyalties are with Katie. Katie's Irish, I'm Irish. I have grew up um, watching the woman since day one. I want nothing more to see Katie to um, avenge her defeat and win. And I want Katie to finish on a high and that's, that's it. Definitely, and I, I mean, I love Chantal Karen. I think she's great, but I feel like Katie Taylor, I don't want her to retire. She might slap me, me saying that, but retiring undisputed in a second weight division, I think no one can deny that would be special as well. Shauna O'Keefe, my final question. Thank you for giving me your time today down the Bosch gym. Before I think you're starting training with Kev, my final question, we ask everyone this from, from Nigel Ben to Kevin Mitchell to, uh, to Eddie Hearn, we ask everyone this, what does boxing mean to you? Uh, so boxing means so boxing is so important to me and what it means to me is like having no air so for six years I didn't train because I became a personal trainer and do you know when you know there's something missing um, your life isn't fulfilled in any aspect because no matter what you do it's just not enough that's what boxing is right now I'm a happy wholesome fulfilled human being because I'm doing what I love and that's it Definitely, I mean, and training with Kevin Mitchell, there's not, there's nothing beating it as well. Sure. Nothing more 
interesting at all. <laughs> thank you, Shauna O'Keefe. Thank you very much, and best of luck on December the eighth, mate.